What's up everybody? Welcome to another BroGraph tutorial. I'm Dave Koss and today we're going to be talking about what you do when you get a really bad looking logo for somebody. I'm going to show you a little secret of mine. Whenever I get a bad logo, let's say that you get um, somebody's logo for their business. They don't have a branding department. They just have some Word document or like, I got a JPEG. Will that work? Mm, not really, but okay. This This is what I got to work with right here. This is it. What do you do when you get something like this? There's no vector file. Uh, that's about it. Well, here's what you do. If, if it's a really complicated thing uh, with a lot of curves and splines and all that, or like a weird font that's like a custom font, you're going to have to trace it. Sorry. You're just going to have to. Uh, fortunately, though, you can sometimes find the font that you want. I like to use whatthefont.com and I can find what kind of font is being used. It's very obvious though that in the case of this right here, this is just Gotham. So at least I got that going for me, which is nice. And what I like to do is in my folder layout, I like to put a reference file of that person's logo. Then I'll start a new Cinema 4D file and I'll bring that logo right in, just drag it into materials and tell it to copy to the project location. I'll also, first thing I do, I turn off specular because that'll just wash it out. Go to plane and orient it negative Z and bring it back in Z space so it's not right at origin. If you drop that logo, if you can call it that, right onto the plane. Now in this case it's actually right because this was a square logo but if you look down here you can see the resolution is 200 by 200 and what I'll do is I'll click on the plane and I'll do the width just type in that width because usually it'll it'll get me to the right aspect ratio and then I can scale it back down where it needs to go. If you look at this you'll see that you really can't make out what's going out here going on here and that's not just because it's a bad JPEG but also because of in your editor there's the preview size I like to put that on 4 meg and it just helps make it look a little bit better most of the time uh, not so much in this case because it's a pretty small crappy JPEG logo but if you go to your front view you change your display settings to anything besides lines that will work for you. Now you can see a flat straight on view of what you're working with. I'm going to take the Mo text tool. It's going to create text and I'm going to write out exactly what I see here slash r slash cinema 4d. Alright, change that also going to name it that up here in my objects so that I am using proper uh, proper work etiquette here make sure you name everything I'm going to call this ref okay cinema 4d we're gonna get the font down still waiting for Maxon to make it so where you can hit a letter and go to that font instead of going through a giant list Gotham HTF and I believe that this was bold alright so I'm gonna go to where the first letter starts which is a slash in this case I'm gonna scale it up till it's the right scale I'm just looking at the first letter don't worry about the rest It's also possible that this was more than just bold. Maybe it was black. Actually, I can go tell you. This was. Oh, it was bold. Never mind. All right, bold. I'm also going to adjust the horizontal spacing here. Uh, I'm going to do negative 0.1. We'll see what happens. Do. Let's bring this down. Negative 0.5. Oop, too much. Negative 0.3. Negative 0.2. So we're right in the middle. Neg I hate doing negative points. 0 .0, 0 0.025. That's what I wanted to do. 
So it really is like a guessing game. I always go backwards to, okay, that, that is close enough to do what we want to do here. <sighs> All right. So here is what we have. We've got this crappy logo kind of extruded for now. And we're going to do a couple things. I like to actually take the, round, the, the stroked edges of something like this and turn that into um, not just a stroke. Like I don't just take the and do a stroke like later in After Effects. I like to actually put caps on the letters that are this color and then the rest of the... Uh, the rest of the texture is all whatever the, the border texture is. Here's how you do that. On caps, if you select start and end, and then hold down command while you select fillet cap, see, both of these will, will change. In this case, we're going to do one step. We're not going to do a smooth bevel. We're going to do kind of a hard edge because we want this to look sort of like a stroke. I'm going to create a new material and it's just going to be a basic black material. We'll, we'll worry about all the attributes later. Put that on top. Okay, so it's black. So my sides and my edges here, which would be R1 and R2 on the back, these bevels, they're going to be black. So all we want to be red are the inner parts right here. So I'm going to make another material that's just straight up red and put that on here too except it covers up everything we don't want it to cover up the whole thing we only want this on caps which means if you put C1 in selection here it only goes on to the caps if you hit render you can see what that looks like so we're getting somewhere that looks a lot better than that did so we're pretty much done with this piece now because we've recreated the logo. Now, we could stop there and say, there we go, we extruded it, great, we're done. But let's take it another another step here and make it look a little bit better. I'm gonna go ahead and save. And what I would like to do is something with the bevels. I would actually like these caps to go inward just a little bit. The way that you do that is in fillet type, you um, do a half circle. And see, now this actually comes in over here instead of being flush. And you get kind of a cool look with that, especially when you start turning on ambient occlusion and you get shadows and stuff from your lights. Now, my material one and two, we're going to make a, a bunch of adjustments on. First, though, we got to set up a couple lights. And I'm going to make a light. Let's look at it from the top here. I'm going to make a light. And this is a key light. It's going to be slightly tilted that way, but it is pointed at center. And I'm going to hold down Command and duplicate that out move it in the other direction. I'm going to pull it back so this is more of a fill light. You can see that covers a broader range. Let's label them key and fill. Now we don't want them looking straight on at origin. You can see they're kind of centered up. We'll select them both, bring them up just a little bit, and then do a rotate and rotate them down. So they're still pointing in the center right there. They're just a little bit further up. Now the key is going to have shadows, just in case. I don't think we're going to we're going to create too many shadows here, but we're going to turn it on your shadow maps. You don't want it 250. Try 1500 or above to start. We're only going to have shadows on this key light, not on the fill. You don't want to mess with too many shadows. And the key light is going to be at 90%, while the fill light is going to be about 60% to start. That may change, but we'll see. Now if we hit render, we got a little bit better look here. Now there's way too much specular going on, but we're going to fix that as well. Um, under Content Browser, if you go to your presets for Cinema 4D, you're going to want to do a search for HDRI. 
and I'm going to use my favorite HDRI, which is this one that I call the winery. It's HDRI 004. Then I'm going to create a sky object, put that HDRI on the sky. Immediately, I'm going to add a compositing tag to the sky and mess with some options here. First of all, it's not seen by camera. And it's not seen by transparency, because if you change the transparency to something, you don't want to see th that through it, which I wish the sky just had somehow had that off by default. But there you go. Now, we don't have any reflections of this, and that is because we don't have reflections on either of these red or black textures. If you click on them, so they're both selected, and go to Basic, turn on Reflections, they're going to start out like a mirror ball. You render it out, that's what you get. It's kind of cool looking, but that doesn't look like the original logo that we made. So I'm going to take the reflection down to about 30. We can see what that looks like here. I kind of like that. Um, however, even though it looks good on the black, I think it's still a little bit too much on the red. And depending on your color, your reflections are going to look different. You're going to have to get your reflections kind of where you want them and then go material by material. I'm putting 20. Now here's my little secret that I always use. When I have something super basic like this, these are colliding a little bit, but that's okay. We'll take care of that later. When I have something super, super easy, super boring, and I want to do something with it, this is what I do to my color. I go add a bump. And although I really don't think it looks like metal, I do a texture and I do a surface and it's called metal. Now when you render, you're not going to see anything. And that's because for this, what you really got to do is go to the material tag and change this to cubic. There we go. That's more of what I'm looking for on this. Now, I guess I'll fix these collisions really fast. It's a little bit better. They are butted up against each other though, so. I'll just do zero for now so you can see. There we go. Now this is a little too much. I don't want that much bump going on, but that's a good start. If I jack up the strength, you can see what it's doing here. I'm only going to do about five, maybe 10, maybe 10. The other thing that you can do is uh, you can go back into the bump and you can change the frequency out. I change it to two. You can see you little you get a little bit more here. The other thing you can do is in your reflections, blur those reflections just a little bit. Maybe one or two percent. That's still kind of washed out, and that's because we haven't adjusted our specular at all. If I go down and make this more of a pointy specular, you can see we get that red back. It doesn't look pink. The other thing to do here is to give a little more specular to your logo. And the way you do that is you create another light and you put it above what you're working on. You, you move it down um, 80 degrees down from where it starts. And you can see on this right view here it's 80 degrees down and it's going to be pointed right at the middle of what you're working on. You can bring it in. Now, what it does by default is it actually adds light to this. We don't want to do that. We actually only want specular light. So I'm going to type spec. That's its name. If I bring up the intensity just to start out to about 300, look what happens. If I look at the top of this, there's actually light that's hitting this. And since we're doing a super intensity here, it's going to make these start looking gray. We only want the specular part of the light hitting this. We only want it to affect specular on the letters. So if you turn off diffuse, then you will only get the specular portion. Now on um, our dark texture here, we haven't actually adjusted the specular levels yet. We want them to be more of a pointy. But you can see there, if we go back to our light now, we turn it back on, 
And let me jack it up even more so you can see the difference here. There's light hitting the top of this. Now it's black, so it's kind of hard to see. But if you turn off diffuse, there's a huge difference. You only want the specular hitting this. The um, specular intensity, usually between 200 and 300, depending on what your materials are, are what you'll use. And the great thing about this is you can affect kind of like the gleam that's going across this without affecting any of the lighting. So you take specular, the specular light, and you start it maybe over here at frame zero, keyframe it, move it across for 90 frames, have it kind of go across like this, keyframe it again. So you get that cool like gleam, specular gleam sitting there on the bevels. And you also have this nice little texture that's going on inside. So that if you do like a cool camera move, you get lots of cool reflections here. You see a lot of the specular coming across the bevels and you see these cool bumpy reflections going on. It's so much better than just having just a flat red. See how nice that looks? And that looks way better than just taking an existing file that somebody has like this one, for example, Cinema 4D, or Cinema 4D, and just slapping it in something or extruding it. So that's kind of what I do if I come across something really simple, but they don't want to redesign their logo. I'll at least try and make it look nice. There it is, and that's it. If you want to see more tutorials, you can go to brograph.com. You can also go share with us on uh, Reddit uh, slash r slash Cinema 4D. You can talk to us on Facebook, on our Facebook page. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, which that means you'll get the new tutorials the moment that they come out. Or follow us on Twitter as well. If you uh, do one of these yourself, we'd also like to see those. Um, it's always fun to see what people are doing with the techniques that, that we're showing in these tutorials. So until next time, I'm Dave Koss. Thanks for watching. It's pretty good, I guess.